testing a levelet, bench testing the levelet, we're going to try to simulate what happens when it's on your car. The levelet is at zero pressure currently, and our nitrogen regulator is set to 400 PSI. So we're going to go ahead and put an initial charge into the levelet of about 100 PSI. That's a little too much, I think. I'm going to back it off. So right now, system pressure into the level is 100 PSI. The gauge, there's a little difference between the two gauges. With 400 PSI in the regulator, if the strut were pumping, it would simulate what I'm doing with this valve. You should see this gauge and the level jump up to 400. And it does. Lock that. We're going to vent the levelet down. Now, if the strut is pumping, as the strut extends, the pressure is going to drop. Take that down to about 200 or thereabout. Now, Kirk is going to tip it just a few degrees. And when it's tipped this way, this cylinder should be blocked. It's acting like a reservoir. So now when I hit pressure to the levelet, this gauge should not move. And it didn't. I just put 400 PSI, a pumping action of the strut, into, the, into here. And the pressure and stayed it, in the strut. It, the pressure stayed in the strut, but did not go into here. It's closed. I'm going to tip that thing back <clears throat> level. What will it do? Well, okay, when we tip it back level, I'm going to block off the strut here for a minute. We'll tip it back level. And as soon as the pressure in the levelet is equal to or less than what's in the strut, in other words, the strut shaft is dropping out, now we need to take this down to... So our system pressure, this is the strut. I'm going to take this down until we see this needle drop, and it just dropped. So now, that valve is open because the strut has dropped out. If you put the pressure back in it from the strut pump, and it'll pressurize both. So now that valve should be open, and it is. It works perfectly. So now we're going to see if we can demonstrate the pumping action of the strut. So when you're off camber on a hill and bouncing up and down on that hill, Every time the strut extends, it's going to create a pressure differential between the strut and the valve and the levelet. We're going to vent this down to about down to about 100. And now Kirk is going to tip it. We're going to put 200 psi into the system, and that's blocked. It should be blocked now. Not too much. A little too much. Now we're going to vent and simulate the strut dropping out. When the strut drops out, this pressure will drop. Now the strut pumps back up. And that did not move. 400 PSI. So every time that strut shaft drops out, the pressure in here drops. And you're blocking off even more gas, compressible gas, to that, that cylinder as the strut drops and tries to pump back up. So on an off-camber hill, if you're moving and cycling the strut, the strut will keep on getting harder as you're driving. Yeah, the spring rate will get stiffer and stiffer as you drive. Now we're going to vent. And we're going to test for a pressure spike. Your level again. We're going to put an initial pressure of just minimal 100 PSI into the level. It. We got 400 in there. Oh, we're blocked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, drop it down. 
need to vent that level it. Okay, now initial pressure of 100 PSI, eh, a little more than that. So this is, simulates somewhat what you have when you're just driving. Now we're going to put a sudden pressure spike into this of 400 PSI, and that should move with it. And it did. Drop it back down. So sudden pressure spikes are not a problem on its level. Just do a gradual increase in pressure, just to make sure when we're doing level riding that this valve isn't bouncing back and forth. So gradual increase is not a problem. So now the levelet is perfectly open to the strut and acting as an external reservoir. And that's it.